welcome again and welcome to tonight's guest who is joining us tonight from Budapest. Uh, Levente Schabo is with Midori Global and he will tell us something um, tonight about how to keep your Confluence instance up to date with content lifecycle memes. And with that, over to you Levente and your presentation and I will just disappear. Just one small remark. Uh, Levente has prepared two poll questions. The first one I'm starting right now uh, and uh, the second one a bit later. So if you just uh, could answer those, that would be nice. Um, and uh, see you on the other side. Thank you. Thank you, Jörg, um, and for uh, and Huber for the for the invitation. I think I've already uh, shared my screen, so you should be uh, looking at that. Um, and thank you, everyone, for for joining the webinar today. Um, uh, as you heard, my name is Levente Sabo. I'm um, a customer success manager uh, here at Midori. Um, and today I will um, I will be talking about uh, content lifecycle management for Confluence. And I think it will be a, a great addition, a new angle to um, to the um, to the confluence related presentations that you've heard probably earlier or uh, previously in this this series of webinars because um, I, I watched um, uh, the previous webinars and uh, especially the confluence focused ones. And what stood out for me is that every presenter uh, mentioned how um, popular Confluence is getting, how great all the features are, how, um, how easy it is to create content, share and collaborate on content with Confluence and pretty honestly, how easy it is for Confluence to, um, uh, to get disorganized and, and for it to fill up with, with, with outdated content. So um, um, but this is not new. When I talk to talk to uh, to customers and and, and people about cus, uh, Confluence, uh, they are pretty excited about uh, about the tool, especially when they are starting out. Um, so what what but people tend to talk about less is uh, is the future. What happens with all that content when uh, when nobody is taking care of it? Um, are we sure that uh, whoever is creating content today will be following the, the life cycle of that content later and will be checking back if that piece of content needs, um, needs updating but still relevant or maybe it should be deleted or archived from the, uh, from the instance. Um, our experience here at Midori is that uh, teams uh, tend to think about these things uh, too late when they already have a problem. and. Um, and, and when you have uh, an overgrown confluence, uh, it, it is getting harder and harder to, to, to clean up your, your pages. I, I recommend reading the, um, uh, the use case um, with, uh, with LinkedIn um, that I think we just uh, shared among the, um, uh, among the, the, um, uh, the reading list for, for this presentation, uh, where, uh, where, where LinkedIn just um, uh, summarized their experience when they needed to clear up their, their large instance with thousands of, of spaces and millions of pages. It was a hard, it was a hard job and difficult to do. So, what we propose here at Midori is uh, preparation is 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 very important, and you should start thinking about content lifecycle management as soon as you start using Confluence. Um, before I get into the details, I I wanted to um, uh, just give you a quick. Uh, um, image of who we are. Um, Midori has been um, in the Atlassian ecosystem for more than 10 years now. We are currently a uh, gold marketplace partner uh, of uh, Atlassian and we are serving uh, more than 4,000 customers from small startups to, uh, to the uh, most valuable brands in the world. And the, uh, the solution I want to um, a present to you today is uh, called Better Content Archiving. It's it's also a um, an app. It's been on the market uh, for uh, for a pretty long time, and um, a, a top rated app for uh, for Confluence Server and Data Center. Um, this um, this presentation will be um, concerning Confluence Server and Data Center only, and um, and what we he what we what we call um, the solution is, is basically the content lifecycle management uh, solution for Confluence. It's a dedicated app. It's not something that, that it, that's doing 
uh, this and that, and by the way, it, it takes care of your content lifecycle. It was created just for this purpose with Confluence users and administrators in mind. I structured today's uh, presentation to four, four sections. Uh, first, I wanna very briefly um, give you an idea of what we mean uh, by, uh, by content lifecycle. Um, so, um, uh, so we are on the same page. And then I would like to go into details about what, uh, what you can do with better content or having and how you can actually create your content, content lifecycle rules and carry out a strategy to manage um, your content lifecycle. So this um, this question, um, this this um, um, little graphic here is uh, is from actually from Atlassian from from one of their one of their ebooks. Um, but I found it very very relevant to to, to today's talk. Um, when um, when you create a um, um, so again, what I mentioned is what we propose uh, here is is um, um, managing content lifecycle as soon as you can. So you don't have to deal with an overgrown confluence later. And the, the reason we say that is because uh, we think that the basis of all decision-making, whether a page needs to be archived or updated, um, is knowledge about the usage of, of that page. So if you know when a page was last viewed or last edited, then you can make decisions. Um, and as soon, uh, the sooner you start collecting the data, um, the better position you will be when you need to make a decision um, uh, down the line later. So the first thing when you, when a, a content is created is is definitely when um, when when you start capturing some information, you start working on some draft, uh, you're taking notes at a meeting, you're working on a, um, on a on a business document, and it's still draft. You're still working on it. You created a page in Confluence. Uh, it's not public yet, but many important things happened that will be um, uh, crucial from um, from a content lifecycle perspective. For example, a, a new page is created. There is a created date. There is a new um, uh, a user who will be registered at the creator of that page. Um, uh, so there are a number of metadata that are registered, which, which can be used later. The next step is um, obviously when you publish your content, it's out there, your team uh, can use it. It's, it's definitely the longest phase of a content. Um, and, um, and it's basically the, uh, one of the most one of the most important phases as well. What happens after that is content goes out of uh, out of date, and you need to make a decision about archiving it, um, probably because you are um, uh, uh, you have some um, regulatory reasons or compliance reasons to hold on to that data or hold on to that content for some uh, for some uh, for for a little longer, or you can make decisions to to get rid of it completely and delete it from uh, from your instance. This is uh, obviously an oversimplified scheme, um, but I wanted to um, uh, give you a, a picture of what we mean about content lifecycle, and that where you need help or where you where your Confluence admins or Confluence users need help um, is with the third or fourth steps when you need to make decisions about what, uh, what content needs to be archived. Because no admin should be expected to chase down users and uh, remind them about what needs to be updated. And, and, and if you have thousands of, or millions of pages, it's, it's really just not feasible. You cannot, you cannot do that at scale. So when I, when I try to summarize the benefits of content lifecycle management, I, I came up with three things, and I tried to support those with a quote from from one of our customers as well. The first thing we think it's important is is automation, uh, better content um, uh, archiving, and 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 content um, uh, the content rules are basically automation. So and it's and it's always the case with automation, you you can save money. There is um, um, there's less 
uh, workload on your on your Confluence admins. As I just mentioned, they don't they don't need to uh, to manually um, reach out to uh, to Confluence users and and chase them down about their um, uh, their duties. Uh, you can automate all these with rules um, and, um, and and do it automatically at the right time. The second thing I, I thought about is uh, if you do that right, if you create your Confluence um, uh, content rules right, then you are really improving productivity because your teammates uh, don't need to um, uh, sift through outdated um, content when they're working with uh, with Confluence. They don't need to um, to spend time thinking about whether um, a page they're looking at is still relevant or they need to um, look for um, a more up-to-date version, uh, they can be certain that what they're looking at in, in their Confluence instance is always up-to-date. And if that's the case, we also think that people will keep loving Confluence, keep loving working with Confluence, which will boost user adoption because you didn't invest in Confluence just to see it go almost unusable because of the, uh, because all the, um, all the outdated content that piled up in Confluence over the years. All right, so um, going to, into the specifics, let's, um, let's just very briefly and quickly uh, look into um, the tool called Better Content Archiving and see how you can actually realize those um, uh, those uh, how you can set up the right life cycle rules and you can realize your your content life cycle um, uh, management strategy uh, the key component the key feature um, inside better content archiving is the archiving configuration the the configuration is basically a collection of rules that you set up and archive and apply to um, to a space or uh, multiple spaces Within your configuration, you manage three uh, three main things. The first is for page view tracking. So you need to decide when should a page be considered not viewed. The second thing is for page expiration tracking. So you need to decide when a page should be considered outdated. And the third is for page archiving. When you take the previous two parameters and combine them with an AND or, or operator to um, to decide when a page should be moved to an archive space automatically. Let's uh, zoom into a little bit more into this configuration to to understand these settings a little bit better. So obviously you need to give it a name to um, uh, to make it uh, easier to identify and and also because. Um, different content types require different um, content uh, configuration um, configurations at all. So uh, you will be definitely managing your meeting notes differently than your um, workflow processes or other types of documents. The page view tracking is is a very simple metric. It's it's a number of days that you can set up after which a page in your Confluence instance will be considered uh, not viewed in your reports. You can also set up notifications for, for this event uh, where you can uh, choose which stakeholders should be notified um, about, um, about an outdated page. You can you can uh, you can decide if it's um, uh, it's if it's an author of the last modifier. Or you can just freely define uh, Confluence users who should be notified. The second is for expiration tracking. Again, a number of days after which a page should be uh, considered uh, not updated or outdated. But you can here uh, use labels as well. There is a collection of labels um, uh, preset. Uh, that you can find in the documentation of the app. If you use those labels, you can manually um, control page expiration. So for example, as, as you see here as well, um, if you use a label with an exact date, um, regardless if there is a, um, a number of days set up, the page will be considered um, out of date on that um, date that you specified in the, uh, in the label. So that just gives you a, a more manual way to, uh, to control the setting. Again, you can notify the right stakeholders, 
just very similarly than um, in the previous setting. And for archiving, you can combine the, the, the not viewed and not updated um, parameters to decide when um, should a page um, archive automatically. So in this example, if a page is not viewed for 390 days and it's also not updated for 400 days, that will be moved out of the fresh space into an archive space automatically. Labels also are in play here. So you can manually archive a page or a, um, a family of pages with labels. And then obviously you can notify the right people when that happened. And when I say when that happened, uh, means uh, it's controlled by a uh, scheduled job inside Confluence. So this configuration that you just saw is not happening real time, um, but it's scheduled with a um, scheduled job inside Confluence. Scheduled jobs are built in feature for Confluence. Um, you can modify that schedule and, 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 and reschedule when you want to run and apply that that configuration. By default, it, uh, it happens every Monday morning. So the notification emails and the archiving happens um, on Monday mornings uh, by default. But as I mentioned, you can reschedule that. And here is just a very um, uh, simple example what happens when archiving runs. Here in the, in the right, you see that we have some content under the help desk reports parent page from 2015, 16, and 17. And let's say our configuration says that these, these reports are outdated and now need to be archived. What happens is the app takes these uh, pages and moves them to a newly created archive space and puts them to the right place. The one, the one thing I want you to, to notice here is that your page structure or page hierarchy is is fully maintained, it's, um, it's recreated in the archive space. So if you're not creating piles of outdated pages in the archive space, but we're recreating your, uh, your, your page hierarchy that you created and you are familiar with, so you won't have problem finding the, um, the, archive, uh, the archive content in the archive space. It's just not in your way when you're working with the fresh version of your Confluence space. All right, so that was, that was the core functionality, so to say. But another very important thing I wanna mention here is um, understanding your content quality. So uh, better content archiving is, uh, uh, as I mentioned, all about automatic, uh, automating your content lifecycle rules and cleanup, but it's also about analytics. And it gives you uh, an understanding of the overall health of your Confluence instance. Um, and it also takes um, a little bit different angle than other applications that are um, uh, that are working around Confluence analytics because we let you decide what um, when a page is considered popular or viewed or not viewed or outdated. Um, so everything that you hear, see here in this uh, content quality statistics page is based on a, uh, a Confluence configuration that uh, that I just showed you earlier. So it's all something that you uh, you set up. So going into um, this view and just try to understand what we're seeing here, um, the, uh, the the pages, um, I'm sorry, the, the spaces are um, organized into categories. So we uh, we see a nicer um, image here. It's uh, it's a built-in feature again in, in in Confluence. You can organize your uh, your uh, your your spaces into categories. Every line is a space, and we give you uh, metrics for uh, up to date pages in the in the uh, in in that one particular space. So it's the number and um, and the ratio of you know, the updated pages compared to the of the older pages in the space. Your expired pages, the number of viewed pages, and not viewed pages. And the ratio of your up-to-date pages and viewed pages will give you the the quality, the overall quality metric um, uh, for your uh, for your space. So that gives you a pretty good reading um, uh, about what's happening in your space. 
So that's a global, like a, a, an, an instance level view of what's, um, what's happening with your content. But if you go into one space specifically, you have a similar page status browser where you can look at the, um, look at the pages inside that one space and very similarly just see a status for, uh, for the pages there. And also if you zoom, zoom a little bit more uh, on the page level, you have something called the status indicator up top uh, and on every Confluence page, uh, which, uh, which if you click on, you will get a, a, a nice little bubble that tells you the, the, state, the status of the page and also information about who, um, who um, updated or viewed the page um, the last time. And it also gives you a few extra features uh, that we call quick actions that you can use, for example, to set up um, a quick expiration date or set up archiving quickly. Uh, these these um, um, menu items basically use the labels. So we'll, it will give you um, a more user-friendly way to apply labels on the page. Or you can start a discussion um, with someone uh, about the content of the page um, if it's not up to you who, who, who decide. And um, for, uh, for, for those, uh, th those of you or, or us who are concerned about privacy or, and, or regulations like GDPR, um, I just want to mention that um, the, uh, the usernames can be suppressed. So uh, if you decide so, you can hide um, the username so it's not visible who uh, exactly uh, was the one who edited or uh, viewed the page last time. And also, um, a no, very important aspect of the, of managing and communicating about the content lifecycle and uh, about the status of your pages is uh, notifications or our notification emails. Um, this is what it looks like when uh, when someone gets a notification email uh, about some event or a status of uh, of pages that um, that one particular user um, is responsible for. This is this 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 one is for not viewed. Uh, pages. This one uh, lists expired pages and um, just reminds the user to, um, to take action and um, decide if those pages are still relevant or need, need updating or archiving. And whenever pages have been archived, um, the right stakeholders get a notification about what happened that these pages have been archived in the past. The layout and content of these pages are um, configurable. So if, you're, um, uh, if you want to add extra content um, to these emails, or if you want to um, um, just mo modify anything um, and change the, label, uh, the layout, you can do that by simply modifying the simple HTML template that you will have access uh, inside the application. All right, so with that, um, that's a wrap. Um, I, I hope you piqued your attention. Um, I really recommend you to go ahead and uh, try better content archiving, try creating some, uh, some content lifecycle rules if you haven't already, and uh, play around with it as soon as possible, uh, because I, I guarantee that you, if, if not right now, you will need some sort of, uh, some sort of cleanup uh, strategy down the line if you are using Confluence every day um, and, and, and all your teams are relying on it every day. So with that, I want to just uh, give it back to you, Jörg. Thank you, Levente. Um, and while I promote everybody to um, panelists, uh, we have two questions in the chat that we can start a Q&A off with. Uh, the first question would be, is it already possible to define an extra archiving plan for the archive spaces? We want to delete every page in the archive space, which is older than 10 years. This is not possible with our ver version. Is there a plan to offer this function in the near future? Yes. Um, um, so if I'm uh, understanding it correctly, uh, you uh, the question is about um, archive uh, an archiving configuration for already archived uh, uh, spaces. 
So yes. um, yeah, so that's um, that's not not currently possible, but it's definitely something that we are looking at. If uh, if you have um, knowledge about the um, uh, the feature request, um, if 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 you have been looking into this, I have a feeling that you already know that there is a feature request about it. If you don't, um, then uh, let us know, and I will uh, I will send you the, um, the the link to that. We are collecting interest in that feature request currently. Okay, and the second question from the chat would be. Um, how does the plugin handle a reorder of the space tree and its pages? Um, so, so if, I, if uh, a page well, is archived and then I reorder the, the space tree to the page tree in the space, basically. Yeah, so if you don't, um, the next time when you uh, when you run when you are having configuration runs the app will check the new uh, the new order and it will try to sort it out so our goal with our having is to always recreate the currently um, live structure of your of your spaces so unless you delete something in the um, in the in, in the fresh space um, you will um, you should you should you should see the um, the exact right order um, at, the, at the next time when the uh, when the arriving configuration and the um, scheduled job runs. Okay, I hope that answers that question. Thank you from the questioner. So that answered that question. Um, and now you're all panelists, so your mics are open. You can share your video if you like, and ask questions directly. Yeah. Uh, hi. Thanks uh, for the presentation. We had like that uh, request as well. Uh, so I think we I can even like share the the request uh, uh, a colleague of us did for that uh, deleting of archived spaces. Mm -hmm. um, that can, will come in really handy because like since when uh, the archive is there it's still in the same instance and we were thinking of like uh having a second uh let's say archiving of the archiving in order to get it out of the instance to make oh, yeah. it even slimmer and uh but like uh since the uh, archiving only takes place on non-archived spaces it's like uh you would need to do like some database action and and file out the the sites for their um, date of archiving. <laughs> yeah, I um, I understand the the use case. We 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 definitely know the the, the use case, and um, my goal here is to to convey the message to the product team that uh, uh, so this this just adds to the importance of this one. So thank you for raising that as well here. Um, if I have uh, any updates, we will. Um, so the feature request is the uh, the forum where we are communicating. Um, so I will make sure that um, I'll I'll talk with the with the product team about that, and I'll post a status of of this um, on, on the feature request. Okay. So if you don't follow that, fo follow it, please, and um, uh, I will make sure that we we give you an update. Yeah. The problem with that uh, issue is that it's like uh, since it was it, like. With the support thingy, it's just like uh, viewable by the creator or the reporter. Uh, so we can only like watch the arc, uh, article I posted as well in the chat. All right. Yeah. So then no, no worries because I will, uh, I will then send the, the answer to Jörg and uh, he will post the, uh, uh, everything to, uh, to the community post that we have open. Mm -hmm. Right, Jörg, is that yeah, how exactly. we can communicate? Yeah. Yeah, and there's the um, so we have a community group, and there's a post to this event here, and uh, we can basically attach questions and answers to that post. Um, there's a follow-up question. I don't know if that was answered yet. Uh, what is the official strategy? How to get the old stuff deleted from archived spaces? Did we understand this wrong? In my understanding, we are now stuck in step three of four in the life cycle management. Um, so what's the strategy for deleting? Uh, our strategy is to, it, unless it's absolutely necessary, don't delete anything um, because we're in the business of our hiding. Uh, but with that said, um, there is something called um, 
the um, so I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly. Uh, the way I understood it is that if there is a way to um, to have the app delete content from from Confluence instead of archiving, uh, because if that's the question, you can you can set up your configuration in a way uh, to. Uh, is, uh, no, that's no. not the question. The question that's is, you question. already you already archived the page, and now it has has been ten years in the archive. And then I want to get rid of it. Um, oh. And then there's there's uh, and the the the, the, the request or That's the question here is there are four steps in your graphics, um, so retiring um, or whatever it was. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Oh okay, okay. That's, so that's that was not, how do we do that? Yeah, that's maybe uh, maybe that was a, a slight misunderstanding. Um, mm -hmm. Those steps were not how uh, the app. I mean, if you have a um, a page uh, already archived, um, then uh, there's no, the, the app doesn't, um, uh, doesn't have a way to handle already archived pages or, or, or spaces. That's, that's, that's what the, the previous question was. Yeah. Um, it's a feature request to, uh, uh, to apply uh, a new um, a, um, strategy or a new configuration to already archived spaces Mm -hmm. And in that in that new configuration, you will have the option to 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 probably delete uh, uh, content. But currently, if you have um, a fresh space, then you can have the app either to archive into an archive space or delete the space. Or um, it's better to say to 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 move it to trash in inside Confluence. So currently, it's either step three or step four, but there is no first step three and then yeah, step it's four. exactly yeah okay. yeah. So it would have been would have been um, yeah more more accurate. It's okay. So but but your your strategy is that there will be a full life cycle. So I can archive it and then I can go to step four and delete it. So so. Yes. Yeah. The way I meant it is that you can either, as I said, either archive or delete because yeah. we. Um, yeah, if, if um, uh, the strategy currently is and, and have been that if uh, um, something went, um, uh, you know, outdated, then you can make a decision at that point that you can have, you, you, want, you want that page to be archived mm -hmm. or deleted. So we haven't thought about it as the way mm -hmm. to archive and then delete. But uh, we understand that's a, that's a valid use case and we, uh, we'll, we will be looking at that. Yeah, because uh, looking at the results from the polls, we have 60% participants who are in instances up to 10,000 users and there that can be an issue because that archive can get pretty big and pretty old if you leave it yes, around yeah. for very long. So, yeah. yeah, that's true. So, so we, we achieved like last year or I think it was like end of last year, uh, we uh, reached the half-half. So we had like half the stuff. Like I see, that. I see, yeah. And, and that's like uh, becoming like, of course, like something, uh, a matter of backup and restore and... I understand, yes. And that's significant, 50% is not nothing. So that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. So any other questions? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, hey. uh, yeah, we, we, we ran into that uh, some time ago. Um, I'm not sure if that if that's fixed, but like because um, I couldn't find the, the ticket anymore. So we had a particular strange use case. So imagine you have a page in your page tree uh, which has like a calendar and uh, a sub page of that page is like archived because it's getting old and it's like falls into your schema. So it gets archived. Uh, what the uh, better archiving uh, add-on did was uh, copying the page with the calendar. Yep. Set the author to our technical user, which had our whole team DL behind it. And uh, that made us all watchers of that calendar with that, uh, with that technical user. Uh, I think we uh, had to 
go somewhere and like uh, unwatch all the calendars from the user. But like, uh, do you plan on some actions to prevent something like that? Um, I think I've, I remember that ticket. Um, I'm not sure what was the um, solution. I, yeah, I mean, if, um, you, you are probably know better what the, uh, the solution was, if that was any. Um, there, uh, there is, it, it sounds like a, um, um, a one, like a, a very specific particular um, issue. And, and I, I'm not sure what, uh, what our uh, approach would be uh, from a technical point of view for that. But if, if that's something that concerns you, um, that I encourage you to um, uh, either, I, I can open a new uh, support ticket or, uh, and talk to our, to our team again, um, or, uh, or you can do that as well, because uh, I don't have a good answer to you right now. And I'm, I'm, to my knowledge, there's no, um, um, there's no initiative to, um, to prevent anything like that. Uh, but we should, uh, we should definitely have a technical person uh, involved in that in that conversation because there might be some, you know, some my, some limitations or some something that I am not aware of, um, and, and that what what would be otherwise important. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, do you plan to? Uh, I mean, the focus of the add-on is just the archiving. I understand. Like, do you also plan to introduce like um, some stuff earlier in the uh, life cycle? So like, for example, you have a review mechanism, uh, which is like uh, automatically triggered and creates tasks for an approval stuff. Do you have plans for introducing something like that? We do have plans for, uh, for the app. Uh, we are, um... We will be releasing uh, something um, uh, in the in the near future. It won't be uh, it won't be something in the um, in the earlier part of of the life cycle. Um, it will be more uh, geared towards um, uh, better managing your confluent. Um, you're better managing your your uh, archiving configuration. Um, I, I really don't want to give out um, uh, the, the features that we're working on, uh, but, um, but there will be new features coming out, uh, not in the area that you mentioned, but we're definitely working on some great stuff. That's cool, thank you. I like the, the by the way, I like the page that is page that was like one of the concerns we had earlier. So when we were like looking at or we got like uh, questions for, or when somebody wants, just wants to check uh, what's on the page, they were just resetting the timer uh, on okay. what how to, to be archived. So uh, that, that is really a good feature. That you thank have. you. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you for the feedback. Yeah, thank you. Do you plan to have the uh, temp templates uh, on space level or you have them just globally, right? Um, I'm, so, I'm sorry, can you say that again? Uh, the, the templates for the messages, you have them uh, on a global level, right? You don't have them, or is there a possibility to have them on space level? Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's on the global level. Yeah, um, would you be interested in, in, in having those uh, set up by, on, the, on the space level? Is that what you're? Yeah, we had like some, or I had like some requests like of people asking if we can have like uh, different information on the on the email, but like of course I don't want to change it for everyone in the whole instance. Yeah. So. All right. Um, this is on the uh, global instance level right now. Um, I have taken a note, and I will be getting back to you on that as well. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? And then um, I have a follow-up question, which is a, I have to say I'm the less informed person in this group, so uh, I don't know if that's a good question. Um, Atlassian uh, made a few announcements. Hey, we just introduced archiving of pages, yippee. 
um, as a feature. Um, could you compare your solution to that? And are you in any way threatened to that? Is that something else or is that? Yeah, uh, it's not a, it's absolutely not a, it's a very good question. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, we are in talks with Atlassian. So uh, uh, we had uh, some level of knowledge that they are planning to, to come out with a feature like that. Uh, we are not, we don't feel threatened at this point because they are working on, on, um, on, on Confluence and they, uh, and to my knowledge, if I'm not mistaken, they uh, announced that on uh, Confluence Cloud. Um, so um, what they announced is um, basically pretty familiar to what they announced for Jira Cloud uh, a couple of months earlier. Uh, they are looking at um, a, a page level archiving um, and um, there's also, um, it's something that you can do manually. So you can, if you are looking at a page um, and you decide that it's outdated, you can manually decide it's, it's outdated and you can archive it and get into a, an archive um, a confluence space, but there is nothing, um, uh, there's no way to, to compare uh, our solution with, with that because we are um, uh, currently using automatic rules that you can create to, uh, um, to schedule the cleanup and, and do something manually uh, at scale uh, for server and data center customers. Mm -hmm. um, so what they are doing is, is, um, is a very simple uh, way of, of uh, moving uh, and deciding on pages uh, that needs to be archived. Um, it's, uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's close to, uh, to our offering at this point. And uh, if I haven't um, missed that, do you have any plans for the cloud? Um, no, you, you haven't missed that. I, we <laughs> haven't talked about uh, that live. Um, uh, so we are uh, currently monitoring the situation with, uh, with Confluence Cloud. Uh, currently the situation is that we, uh, the, so the Confluence Cloud API is currently not at the point or not at an advancement level where we can, or anyone could, uh, could build pretty complex uh, applications on. Um, and that's, uh, that's why we are looking at the possibility, but uh, at, um, currently we, we don't see uh, that we could deliver a good quality um, app for Confluence Cloud. Um, we could we could do something. We could do like uh, ten or or twenty percent of what we can do on server and data center. But our experience is that customers are comparing cloud and server apps. And uh, if we could if you uh, went out with uh, with ten percent of what we can do on server, it would be a a, a huge disappointment. So um, we are we are looking at the possibility to to come out in cloud. Uh, but right now we. Uh, we, uh, we, we just have too many limitations to do it. Okay. So if nobody else has questions, I will just continue asking. Um, another one. Uh, did you have any requests like, oh, so Levento server was fun, thank you very much, but we are migrating to the cloud, but we could use your help basically to leave all that stuff behind that we do not want to migrate to the cloud. So is there any plans or do you have any features that help customers that want to migrate in the cloud to keep an uh, a backup, an archive, a record of what they do not want to migrate into the cloud because it's either old, but it's still useful. It could be useful in the future, but it would just eat space in the cloud. Is there something like that? Is that a use case no, that you've um, been asked for? It's it's very important. Uh, I mean, it's very interesting uh, what you mentioned. No, we haven't we haven't heard um, we haven't heard about that use case. We haven't. Um, we haven't been contacted with uh, with anything like that from 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 a customer yet. Okay. Yeah, I have a question almost related to that. Uh, for data center, do you have like plans to have like a particular node um, serving as archive and the rest just performing as active confluence? Um, that's an interesting question as well. Um, let me let me take notes. Um, uh, no, we uh, we uh, we haven't um, we haven't 
we haven't uh, heard that use case as well. We have a feature request for uh, archiving um, content into a separate uh, instance, separate conference instance. So that's that's a use case we heard about, um, but not the um, but not the way where we could do that um, with within a, um, a data center cluster. Um, so that, no, that was a, that was a new question uh, to me, and I will definitely take the uh, uh, ask the uh, opinion of, of of our product team and uh, and post that as well in the community post. Okay. Anything else? Um, do you plan on like uh, introducing like on space level uh, that you can like basically tell who gets like notifications on uh, pages or like the like uh, the uh, long not viewed pages or the about to archive pages which are like not administrator and not the uh, reporter or last updater um yeah so that's that's also an interesting um uh thing and i you kind of touched on something that we're working on um so currently you can you can define um uh, your confidence users freely um, um uh, to be notified uh but we are working on something called the page owners so you will be able to uh, define for a particular page um, a, an owner uh, person who will be who will be notified about um, events and that that owner um, so we are also working on uh, working with uh, other uh, popular app vendors uh, for confluence who um, uh, who might uh, uh, have the same or similar page owner um, uh, feature and uh, we are trying to to work with them to uh, so you can so you can select a page owner from from another uh, apps um, users as well so i'm not sure if i'm making myself clear the the, the point is that uh, yeah there we, we are working on something that that is um, related to to what you're asking that, that sounds really good uh, another follow-up thingy for that one um, can you also like introduce that for groups so like um, for uh, for our instance it's like for um, they have like some roles, for example, in Confluence mm -hmm. we have that. We uh, addressed that last week with the uh, Confluence presentation as well. Um, so we are like kind of faking that with uh, groups uh, to a certain extent, not not uh, all over the instance, but for some uh, where like some pages are like more strict and others are more open. Um, the uh, restrictions uh, would cost us like a tremendous amount of time to update them for every user. So like we introduced a role group uh, replacing that user. Um, can you do that also for uh, that one? That would be great so that we can like uh, just give that group um, that permission and notifications and mm -hmm. they, can, uh, they get notified. So we have like uh, in, in end effect, we just have like one person in that group, but we can, uh, when that person goes on vacation or leaves the company, we just need to add another person to that group and like everything is fine. I see. Yeah, I, I, I see the question and thanks. I, um, I'm not 100% sure if that uh, this, this feature will be also added like with groups, um, but I don't, so I can't I can't say that it it will be, um, so uh, I need to also find that out. But I don't see why it wouldn't be wouldn't be an interesting use case. Thanks. Thanks for thanks for bringing that up as well. Okay. Other questions? You can all ask directly. Let me just check the Q&A box. No, nothing in the Q&A box. Going once, going twice, and 
Thank you. That's it for tonight, I would say. Um, Levente, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing and answering all that questions. Um, any notes that you took, um, you can answer in the community group and everybody else can find it in the community group. The link will be in the show notes um, for this video. Um, and yeah, that's it for tonight. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Levente. Uh, have a nice evening, have a nice time of day, wherever you are. And uh, see you next week on Monday again. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me again. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.